sure you're all aware of the whole Logan Paul thing, right? Um, I don't think I need to explain that that much. You know how he's become like the social. Oh, let me hide that now. How he's become like, the social pariah of the whole YouTube community. You know through his like outlandish acts that kind of one after the other increasingly got a little bit more ridiculous until he went to Japan. And he filmed a guy who had hanged himself in a suicide forest. And he was kind of, you know, him and his close of friends were really pumped up about it, right? Which rubbed everyone up the wrong way. And he eventually lost his monetization, monetization and loads of things have happened, right? Dropped sponsors. Like, he kind of went on this big tour of shame, public shame. At first, he was kind of caught in it, right? He did that whole video where he kind of pretended like he was like stuck in a cave somewhere with a big beard. And he kind of came out of hiding and you kind of redemption tour but i think now he's kind of noticed the gravity and how much ill will there is towards him he's kind of gone his whole redemption tour and it's kind of culminated in this documentary that he's filming which is interesting because he's filming a documentary about a redemption that hasn't happened yet i think case now start mentioning in an interview usually when you do a redemption tour it's sort of like after the fact so imagine if louis ck has taken all this time out during you know these allegations that he was publicly masturbating in front of these girls you take time out, you kind of reflect on it, you do some things that people can see and say, oh, okay, that's him understanding that he fucked up. And then after, after like, you know, you've done that thing that people can say, oh yeah, that's a mark to say he's done good and he's moved on. You then release the documentary because the documentary will be an opportunity for you to show what happened before that moment that shows you've made a, a progress and what's happened in the interim. But he hasn't really done that. So it's a bit weird. It's kind of like a, a 21 year old writing an autobiography, right? You're only writing it just from like a very narrow um, set of experiences, like a very narrow set of time, like between the ages of like what eight, what, what, what are you going to remember? Like eight fragments of like 16, but mostly 18 to 21, if that. And they're, and they're all going to be like highlight real stuff and you haven't really gone through much adversity. Anyway, he wants to do that, no problem whatsoever. But he's gone around, you know, also promoting a fight that he's doing with that, with that super annoying KSI dude. And his brother and the other super annoying KSI brother, which I'm not interested in whatsoever. But the thing that's interesting about this is that he came and spoke to Casey Neistat, who's probably one of the most hardened defendants of the whole YouTube community and how to conduct yourself and things that he think like he's very particular because I've, I'm sure, you know, he's made his entire career um making short movies and films on youtube so he's very he's very precious about the way people treat youtube and he's even precious about the way youtube treats his creators as well so he's very you know very protective of, of the platform so i thought it would be a bit of a car crash interview to be honest because casey seems like someone who wouldn't like logan paul right um or he wouldn't like his actions maybe not the person but the way he kind of goes about things you know but they kind of share some things in common, you know, the kind of, you know, unnecessary clips of them, you know, of fans shouting at them during the street and them involving them in it. And it's, you know, they kind of, there's a bit of a narcissistic vibe that they both have, you know, this kind of like self-centeredness, you know, um, uh, aspect of it. But for the most part, they're polar opposites when, when it comes to what kind of content they create. And the interview itself is interesting, but there's one part of it that really made me laugh <laughs> that hopefully I think I might have have a clip of it now. Hopefully I do. Let's see if I got it. Did I mark it time-wise? Oh no, let me see. So, interview kind of starts around here. Let me put up on the screen. Uh, overnight, becoming the most hated man in the world in the snap of a, of a finger. So, the question that the doc answers is how, how do you recover from that? Can you recover from that? Me sitting you with you right now, I'm in the journey right now with you like will is it possible for logan paul to make a comeback or am i going to be a failed youtuber and fall and crawl into a hole like half the world wants me to do is is you know just ask, ask directly is this a fluff piece to make people feel better about logan paul no no not at all this it's it's from making content throughout the years i try to be as unbiased as possible and when you say fluff piece like what because like a bullshit video it's just like <laughs> i find it funny that he didn't know what a fluff piece means which is you know kind of adorable but it does raise an interesting question right are you allowed in the current society or currently now with the outrage culture and everyone wanting to be really pissed off with everything everyone waiting for a reason to kind of react and become an activist and fight for something 
are you allowed to make a comeback? Now, I'm not excusing what Logan Paul did. I think it's bad. But I think part of his issue he is, part of the issue that he has is that a lot of people don't like him anyway, right? They didn't like his content. They thought he was annoying. Um, they didn't understand. They didn't understand why he was so famous. They didn't understand why he had so much money. They didn't understand why kids found that stuff so funny. It just it just pissed them off, right? That he was popular. So the moment he did something that would generally be not accepted amongst the whole population, right? It's not like a an a Pacific thing. It's not like a oh you don't get it because you guys are old. No, he did something that everyone kind of thought was shitty. Everyone piled on because they wanted to kind of get him get him the fuck out of here, right? Kind of similar to the whole what Charlemagne the God's kind of going through, right? <clears throat> it's helping that his industry friends are not saying much, but Charlemagne the God has, you know, always been kind of a controversial and divisive kind of figure. And he's built up, but now he's kind of changed and evolved into this kind of conscious, more, you know, well thought out, a little bit more reserved character who's now got HBO money behind him. <clears throat> But he made a mistake, fucked up in the, in the past, and now they're kind of using that to kind of hit him over the head with, which shows that there's a lot of ill will uh, towards Charlemagne the God, maybe with some people in the industry, some people in the scene, they kind of kind of want to see him tear down. Now, the idea is that, can you make a comeback, though? Like, let's say you made a mistake. Let's say no one's... No, no one's... Um, no one is trying to fuck over your career. Let's say you have made a real big fuck up, right? You did, you did the mistake. You fucked up. Can you make a comeback? And I think sometimes no. If it's an honest mistake, it feels like you can't. It feels like you're com you're you're confined to the history books as a failure, and that you're never going to have another career again, especially in the industry you're working in previously. You can see it with Jeremy Piven, right? He got accused of sexual harassment or abuse by a, a couple of women or a few women. Nothing's been proven here or there, whatever the fact is. He got immediately kind of cut loose. He showed that he got made, I think, ended after a couple of episodes or seasons or maybe the first season. His sex scene didn't get picked up again. And now he's completely pivoted and he's doing stand-up comedy. Um, it's probably a little bit of a failure. I'm, I'm pretty sure some comedians are probably laughing at him. Some actors are probably laughing at him too, chuckling. Maybe he had a shitty attitude and people didn't like him anyway, so they kind of use any excuse to get him out of there. But will he be allowed to make a comeback onto the big screen? Will he be allowed to come back on TV again? Will he be allowed to star in something like Mr. Selfridges ever again? And I don't think he will be. I think the only chance you get as a comeback sometimes in life is if it's something that everyone deems to be innocuous or it's something everyone deems to be uh, interpretation failure. Like the Aziz, the Aziz Ansari thing, right? Um, with the girl that he stuck his hand in her mouth or some shit. Which kind of sounds like a shitty date, right? He sounds like a creepy dude, but it doesn't sound like he did anything abusive, right? It sounds like two, two very clunky people trying to, um, um, trying to escalate sexual tension in their meeting. But it's just a bit clunky, and it kind of didn't work out that well. But unfortunately for the lady, she felt as if like she kind of got um, violated in some way, shape, or form. Read a piece on Babe.com. It kind of ended. Um, it kind of stopped as he's in his tracks. But a statement came out lately, the other day, where Netflix basically was saying that um, they're ready for Aziz Ansari to begin working on his show again, which I've got the name of it. But it's really funny. What's it called? Master of None, right? So they, they want him, they, they're ready for him to come back whenever he's ready to come back. And that's kind of the network taking uh, a decision, a, a kind of stance. Same with Chris Hardwick on AMC, right? They kind of invest, paused his appearances, investigated the issue, and then found out that there was no means to, for him to counsel. So they kind of brought him back to be the guest, to be the presenter of The Walking Dead show. But I'm not sure if, if Logan Paul will have that kind of grace. I'm not sure if he's built up so much ill will towards him that there's just no coming back. Like, to the level that he was before, um... He might still have a core audience or core group of people that might um, roll with him or that might fuck with him. But I think in terms of changing people's minds, uh, the hearts and minds of the majority, I think sometimes when you've, when you've painted yourself in a corner as being the dickhead or the bad guy, you're just going to be the dickhead or the bad guy. He does mention actually in the interview with Case Neistat, which I recommend you check out, he does actually mention in the interview that um, I think Casey asked, asked him, like, why after that whole controversy did you then go and taser a dead rat, a rat or something right they tasered a dead rat or something and i think he mentioned something logan mentioned something along the lines of like he was so fucked up in the head or he was through all this like a hate he was getting online that he thought it might be a good idea just to kind of lean into the bad guy role and kind of play the hill like if everyone wants me to be the bad guy or to be the bad boy on youtube then fuck it, i'm just gonna be it but it's not him he cares too much about what people think he actually has feelings 
um, you kind of saw that a little bit from the clips of him doing the fight press conference, which is fucking like made my eyes bleed, right? Um, but I watched a bit of it with KSI when they had when they did it in London with the True Geordie. You can kind of see a little bit of it when he kind of walked off or he kind of looked like he was about to cry. Unfortunately, he cares what people think, so he's not immune to the criticism or to the things that people are saying about him, which will probably help a lot more, right? If he was a lot more like Fuzzy to you, where he was a little bit psychotic, a little bit like single-minded, a little bit like, you know, selfish, it probably wouldn't matter. But he, he actually cares what people think about him. So he's doing, a, he's, doing, he's doing probably too much to redeem himself in public. He should probably do a lot of this in private and just take time away and just kind of like reflect on what he's done and then come back like with some reflection later on because i think constantly putting yourself out there on video vlogging making documentaries you're con you're constantly performing you're constantly on show you have an interview with um casey neistat i saw a little clip of him on jimmy Kimmel too it probably does not serve it's probably not helping um the perception that he's trying to change because it seems like you know everything's rosy in his garden when it probably isn't and for people on the outside, they're probably like, oh, he hasn't been punished enough, right? He's not silent enough. And I think maybe that kind of helps too. Um, just kind of disappearing. Um, when something happens to that, just disappear. And of course, use the time to reflect properly. But I think it, it helps the social justice warriors kind of type people to feel as if they've done their job if you've kind of just disappeared. Because it makes them feel like, you know, they've kind of taken away your source of income or your job and you've kind of gone away and reflected on it i don't know but i think it's a bit too much i'm not sure what the documentary is going to do i don't think it's going to really help him overall i think unfortunately he's painting himself into a corner of being a bad guy and if i was him i'll just lean into it again i think when you're that when you're that obnoxious and you're that excited to see a dead body it's just it's just a part of you really i think you're just pushing the envelope right it's like an it's like a it's like a douchier version of jackass right like that's basically what it is unfortunately uh, it's like it's like it's like it, that's this is the this is the issue when you when you give jocks youtube a channel and you give them notoriety and you also give them talent right because he has undeniable talent him and his brother jake are talented at making youtube videos they understand that language very very well but jocks being jocks they have a very i don't know not even simplistic they have a very weird way of looking at stuff like it doesn't really necessarily make sense right they kind of don't think things through the way some other people would think things through. Like, ed just editing that video and seeing it back again on, uh, on Adobe Cut or whatever, or Final Cut Pro on iMovie, like, you, you'd you have to have cringed at yourself laughing at a dead body. You just wouldn't put it up. You're just like, you know what? I'm going to leave this. But they didn't think it was a bad idea, which says a lot about their character, but also says a lot about their temperament. So maybe just lean into that a little bit and stop pretending to be another person, which goes into a lot of what the, probably whole, the whole Demi Lovato thing has happened with her, right? Um, I remember a few years ago, her cut, she was coming, she came out really strong. I think this was during a time when Miley Cyrus was like all over hip hop and hanging around with, my, uh, what's his name? Mike Will made it and doing all that shit. I remember her being very against the whole like hip hop thing saying, you know, like glorifying drug culture is really bad and uh, shit for the kids when little, you know, when, when unbeknownst to anyone else, she was a flipping addict. You know what I mean? She was addicted to pills and to heroin and shit. Like she was going through some dark shit. And I think Gary Vaynerchuk mentioned it in another interview. Like, that's where we need to get past. Like, if you look at um, Demi Lovato's last five posts on Instagram, you could never tell what was going to happen after. There was no um, hint of her being damaged or being hurt or in pain or feeling lost or confused or relapsing. There was no evidence of it. It just happened like that in a flash. Do you know what I mean? Because you're presenting one image of yourself on the public, but really you've got all these inner demons going on inside you. So I think if you're Jake Paul and you have this kind of weird, devilish kind of meanness about you that kind of wants to cause a bit of trouble, lean into it and just be honest about it. And I think people at least will know who they're, who they're kind of working with. But when you pretend to kind of be the, the a person for the people, you, you kind of fight for the underdog, you're inviting kids around your house to do videos with you, you're about the community and your fans and love and all that sort of shit. And then you're filming a dead body. It's a bit like... It's not congruent, as they say.